Respected Sheikh Muhammad Akai Osmani, uh, we're very honored uh, with a visit here to Moscow. And uh, Ahlan wa Sahlan, welcome. You had a very busy days here in Moscow. And my first question is, uh, how is your impression of Russia, particularly with regards to financial aspects and Islamic financial aspects? Because you see a lot of, so a lot of questions, people here asking about that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah yabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-mahin, amma ba'd. In fact, uh, I was very much impressed by this visit to Russia. This was not my first visit to this beautiful country, but I have been here some 12 years ago also. And uh, during this period, I found that uh, Russia and Moscow uh, particularly has developed more than uh, it was when I visited first. So, and also it was very encouraging that uh, the people, I found the people very, uh, very uh, gentle and also very kind to me. And uh, I enjoyed the hospitality uh, that should be between the people being brothers, alhamdulillah. And uh, also it was very useful because, alhamdulillah, we had certain uh, opportunities to discuss the, uh, the uh, problems or issues facing Russia. And also we uh, come closer to understanding each other and uh, particularly in the field of Islamic finance, it was very great uh, opportunity for me to introduce Islamic finance and the philosophy underlying it. And Alhamdulillah, it was uh, I had very good uh, discussions during these meetings, during these seminars, and I had an opportunity to speak on Islamic finance in detail. I, Alhamdulillah, received a lot number of uh, questions very pertinent to financial matters, particularly for Islamic finance. And I had an opportunity to uh, clarify some uh, issues that were uh, disturbing the minds of many. So I think that this visit is much more uh, useful okay. than it was in my first visit. And I thank uh, the, in fact, the, my brothers in uh, Russia and the public of Russia and the intelligentsia of the Russia. So I am very thankful for them to be very kind to me. And uh, first of all, thanks to you. And uh, Alhamdulillah that you have opportunity, such an opportunity to take knowledge, to take advice from you, Sheikh. And uh, you travel to a lot of countries. Uh, what do you think uh, is the level of understanding of Islamic finance in Russia now compared, compared to other Islamic and non-Islamic countries? In fact, I visited so many countries where Muslims are in minority, where uh, the, the system is secular, but uh, I cannot say uh, you know, for sure, which country is more receptive uh, of uh, Islamic finance. But the meetings I have attended and the people I have met, both I found that are very eager to learn about Islamic finance and to experience it in their uh, business activities. And it is very encouraging for me. And uh, I could not, uh, in, uh, in fact, I will tell you, tell you frank, frankly that I did not, uh, did not imagine mm. uh, such kind of service, uh, reception of Islamic finance as I found mm. in this visit of mine. Okay. And uh, let's move directly to financial issues. Uh, the core uh, instrument of finance is money. So what is the main specific uh, issue or issues of money. I mean, uh, what is the uh, difference between money according to Sharia and uh, 
is uh, according to the secular understanding. What are the main? Uh, uh, this is very pertinent question about Islamic finance. I have explained it in my lecture that uh, uh, money, the nature of money. The first uh, philosopher, according to my limited knowledge, who spoke about money and its nature was Imam Ghazali. Some 600 years ago, mm -hmm. he was the first person who spoke about money and about the, its, its nature. And he said that money is not a commodity and it cannot be treated as such. So he said that uh, whenever money will be uh, made a commodity or, uh, or considered to be a commodity, then it will uh, harm the uh, economic atmosphere uh, at large. And therefore, he, he uh, after Imam Ghazali, there were, uh, there were many philosophers who also said that it is a medium of exchange. So first, the first person who said, according to my limited knowledge, who said that it is a medium of exchange, Imam Ghazali. But uh, thereafter, there came many philosophers who admitted that it is a uh, medium of exchange. But unfortunately, they could not uh, uh, could not uh, go further to uh, reach the logical consequence or logical result of uh, this principle that it is a medium of exchange. Because uh, they wanted to, so many people wanted to take money as a thing which can be traded in. And for that purpose, the main obstacle was that in all religions, including Judaism, Christianity, Islam, in every religion, the riba, that is interest, was prohibited. So, uh, at the very beginning, they tried to mis uh, to interpret money or inter interpret uh, riba or interest uh, as to make it a commodity in, uh, in the sense that it may be traded in. So, uh, this once this obstacle was removed and this interpretation was uh, has dominated among the philosophers or among the uh, among the economists, then they allowed interest on the basis that it was usually that was uh, prohibited. That is a, a consumption loan. But if it is a commercial loan, then the, uh, uh, charging something about the principle should not be prohibited. Once they uh, reached this conclusion, then it led to a number of uh, transactions uh, that were uh, not, uh, in fact, uh, based on a, a sustainable economy. So, therefore, there came uh, paper currency, and paper currency, after paper currency, there came financial uh, papers, they were traded, then came uh, a creation of money through banks, which has nothing, uh, nothing uh, real. This is a, a, an artificial creation of money. And then came the the derivatives in the form of uh, of uh, futures and in the form of uh, options and swaps. These uh, derivatives uh, grew more and more to make the economy a bubble rather than. Uh, rather, I will say, uh, as a balloon, which could be burst any time. And this was the basic reason for the volatility of the uh, economy throughout history. And there were many, uh, many occasions where uh, the world faced uh, a crisis of recession, crisis uh, of you know, trade cycle. So, and lastly, in 19, uh, 2008, it was the the, uh, the biggest crisis that uh, faced by uh, was faced by the world. At that point of time, they uh, you know, they admitted that our uh, basic system of economy is faulty, and it should be uh, should be uh, reformed. But uh, again, the people who benefited from this kind of economy, they uh, would not be ready to accept 
that we should make uh, revolutionary changes in our economic system. So therefore, we are we are uh, we are uh, you know we are proceeding on in the same direction as they wanted. I understand that uh, derivatives, uh, as they are, they are prohibited by Islam because it's just a bubble. But uh, what about fiat money? What is the attitude of the Shia? About what? Fiat money, the paper money which are backed yeah. by the government. Is it? Uh, does it conform to the Sharia perception of money or every single currency should be backed by gold or some goods or some other assets? Actual position is that uh, money, of, uh, even if it is a paper money, should have been backed by some commodity mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you know, gold, silver, etc. But the problem of uh, earning money earning money without uh, a real real money that you know lead led to uh, accept this uh, paper money so there uh, the paper money uh, at the outset was backed fully backed by uh, gold or silver before that yeah. before, uh, in mm -hmm. early years but uh, you know unfortunately there came a uh, you know fractional reserve system through which the amount of gold and silver behind the paper money reduced mm -hmm. and at the at last moment all the countries uh, you know all the countries uh, said that we uh, don't have anything except dollars but mm -hmm. USA you know uh, announced for the whole world that um, I have dollars and these dollars are backed by gold and therefore any any time you can come to me and uh, you know, get gold from us by showing this dollar. In 1970, there was the such uh, first time in which USA backed out mm -hmm. and said that uh, we are uh, not able to give to you any gold or silver. So now we left. We are left with uh, such uh, some paper only. Mm -hmm. There is yes. nothing behind it. The same can be uh, said with, uh, about uh, cryptocurrency because they are not backed by any goods. And uh, as you mentioned during one of the lectures that uh, you are not ready to give any fatwas or decision about that. But uh, can we conclude that cryptocurrency uh, have the same drawback uh, as the fiat money? This is one thing. And the other thing, as you mentioned, there is fewer speculation as far as uh, I understand. Well, uh, there is uh, some basic, uh, basic differences between paper money and, uh, between, and uh, cryptocurrency. The basic difference is that even though the paper money has no backing at the moment, but still mm -hmm. they are backed by by a basket of uh, basket of uh, goods mm -hmm. and and services. You know, if uh, go to any country, these notes or currency notes, they are backed by uh, index of. Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, goods and services. Mm -hmm. but, uh, conversely, the cryptocurrency has no, no such backing mm -hmm. so far. You know, it was the first, first. It was just you may was uh, invented by a person who is not known so far, mm -hmm. and then uh, he uh, started uh, to you know, to market it, but he couldn't. The first transaction that he undertook was to buy a pizza. Buy a pizza through uh, this, uh, this yeah. type of currency. So then uh, speculators came in, and they raised. The, they, at that point of time, I think it was hundreds of uh, hundreds of uh, uh, cryptocurrency uh, for a uh, dollar. Now came the speculators, and now it uh, raised uh, the price of uh, these. Um, uh, Bitcoin large amount and uh, it goes up, goes down uh, through speculation. Therefore, this is the basic difference between paper money and uh, cryptocurrency. So, to sum it up, uh, about the problems in the financial system, in the currency the system of currency, uh, we can say that uh, the globe now is standing on the edge of a financial crisis, we can, which can arise any time because of the reasons you mentioned. So uh, 
do you see any solution to this uh, uh, threat? And what can be done to overcome it? Is there anything can be done, or it's just a matter of time that the crisis will? You know, the the basic solution is, according to me, and Allah knows best, that uh, we should uh, go back to uh, to treat uh, money as a medium of exchange, except in the cross border transactions. In cross border transactions. We need to have to exchange uh, some currency with other currency. So it should, we we should uh, should uh, limit the uh, exchange of currency to the cross border transactions only. But if you uh, analyze the present situation, is that the uh, money or uh, you know the currencies are sold and bought by uh, speculators. And uh, a very tiny uh, percentage of these transactions is for the trade purpose. Otherwise, it is just a speculation. Yes, but it refers to, not only to the currency, but to the shares also, and uh, to the even to the commodities, to yes. a lot of kinds. Like we speak about grain, yes. the same. The speculation is everywhere. Yeah, but this speculation uh, is the basic cause of uh, this, this crisis, and therefore. In, from Sharia point of view, if I speak uh, from Sharia point of view, the stocks should be traded in, no problem. But there should not, there should not be short sales. Mm -hmm. There should not be, uh, you know, short sales in the sense that you uh, sell something you don't own. So this is prohibited from Sharia point of view. So if we uh, restrict our uh, stock exchange for uh, transactions with uh, without short sale, uh, short selling, then the problem can uh, can be solved for that purpose. As far as the studies to speak about shares, IOFI Sharia standards and you are heading the Sharia Council of IOFI set up certain criteria for shares to enable Muslims to or other investors to invest according to the Sharia. And those criteria involve some, some part, part of uh, prohibited income, like up to 5% of prohibited income and up to 30% of um, interest-based loans uh, on the total market uh, value of the company, So uh, and some other criteria. Uh, so uh, there are actually two questions regarding that. The first is, is uh, why is this compromise? Is uh, because uh, it is uh, there is a part of prohibition in the company. It, it, it exists. And the second one, if we speak about Russia, and if we screen the companies which are at the stock exchange, we cannot find even companies which comply to those criteria because the amount of debt of these companies is huge, much more. Yeah. The, uh, in fact, as you rightly said. This is a compromise, not it's, it's not uh, a, uh, an ideal situation. It is a compromise. This compromise is based on necessity, not uh, not uh, as a principle. As a principle, even five percent should not be uh, should not be taken. But uh, uh, you know, uh, there is necessity in the sense that the whole world. Is uh, you know uh, the business of the whole world is through the company. So if we prohibit uh, prohibit uh, purchasing any kind of a stock, then the people will be without any uh, any uh, particular type in which they could invest mm -hmm. uh, you know, according to Sharia. For that purpose, this, this com uh, compromise was there. So, uh, but the ideal is, is not an ideal situation. Now, once this is a this is a compromise, you know. So this compromise, based on necessity, based on on real need, it may vary from country to country. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, you know, but this may vary from country to country. Therefore, there are some countries in which not uh, thirty percent. But also some in mm. some cases forty percent was was allowed. So it's a matter of local fatwa, like local something yeah. like that. Yeah. And speaking about investment, uh, a lot of Muslims in Russia are asking 
or what is the best way to invest to have some funds, maybe small or bigger funds? What is the best way to invest? Where to invest? Because uh, we speak about stock market, but uh, is it the best way? I'm not fully aware of the uh, tools or the channels in which uh, the money could be invested. But uh, I uh, feel that if there are some funds, there are some uh, investment companies. I heard about uh, some com uh, companies that have been established in Russia. Islamic, Islamic yes. investment companies. Uh, you know, today I think we met some people from yes. Kazan right. who have such kind of companies. In Kazakhstan. Yeah, yes. in, the, in North Sudakistan. Yes. So Western companies should be used for investment. And if, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, the uh, stocks are analyzed. So, and there was a time when in even US, you or any other country, you could hardly find mm. a company in which a, uh, a halal investment may be done. That was pretty new. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, when uh, but we started for why uh, Dow Jones Islamic Index, then uh, the number of companies you know, increased. Mm -hmm. And many companies, you know, made themselves to uh, comply with these such conditions. And gradually, the number uh, of index uh, was raised. So, similarly, I think uh, if, you, if uh, one analyzes the stocks of, the, of Russia, uh, in Russia, then it may be that uh, uh, this index, uh, again, an index that could be uh, could be uh, created mm -hmm. in which uh, the Muslim could uh, invest. Okay. And uh, there is such a, uh, an activity as uh, uh, purchasing of debts, especially when we speak about bankrupt companies. Uh, so, uh, what does the Sharia say about it? There is usually an auction, yes, uh, going on, and people raise their hands for what is they going, for what price they're going to buy the debt of the company. So debts. debts, yes. The company is bankrupt. The company is yeah. bankrupt. Yeah. But we still, uh, the uh, bankrupt company has some assets. Some, uh, yes, and those assets uh, and uh, the, the assets of the company, as it, and the debts of the company are being uh, brought on the auction. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, is it allowed to go and uh, take it cheaper than on the market? They usually, so all the assets of the company are sold out cheaper than the market price. Uh, uh, the, uh, the matter depends on the uh, on the liquidator. Mm -hmm. uh, the liquidator should be should be very fair to uh, to the company and to the particulars. The problem is, it's not uh, in practice. It is not always so. The liquidators not usually follow the market price. Uh, the market price, you know, in fact, market price, as you know does not reflect the real value of the company, real value of the, of the assets. So, uh, therefore, uh, market value, uh, by and large, is an uh, artificial value because of speculations, because of uh, certain factors that make it uh, very, uh, uh, very artificial. But uh, the real value, uh, you may say, the, you know, uh, not book value, but the historical value, but the value of the real assets. So, a liquidator, when he puts the company uh, for auction, he should have in his mind the real value of the assets the company has. Mm -hmm. So, it may be less than the, uh, the market price. But uh, it it will reflect the real price of the of the assets owned by the company. Mm -hmm. So far as debts are concerned, the debts cannot be traded uh, according to Sharia except uh, to a par value. But uh, uh, in case the debts, there are real assets and debts both. Then uh, there is a, an, a principle in Sharia. Uh, that they are not really, uh, really, uh, uh, really the object of, uh, of the purchase, of purchasing, but they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, to the, uh, to the real assets, uh, 
relevant or going on, like yeah. related to or related to me. So, to me, if I uh, I want to buy that, so that this is not allowed. But if I am uh, purchasing a business which comprises some assets, real assets, and also some debts, then I can do that. And uh, a small question about Nisab in gold and Nisab, Nisab in silver. Muslim yes. Yeah. And uh, so what uh, should the Muslims like be oriented according to which kind of Nisab? So no, uh, at the moment, normally uh, silver has been taken as the basis of Nisab. Silver? Silver. Okay. The minimum one? Yeah. Okay. The minimum one. So that because it is more beneficial to the poor people. For people, but uh, there are some countries in which uh, in which uh, the the difference is so high that even a person who uh, who owns, for example, uh, some uh, percentage of silver is not cannot be regarded as a person who is able to give something in charity. In, the, in that case, there are many options. We have in Sukha many options. So in some ways, of, of some uh, contemporary scholars say that then in that case we could uh, could base our hisab on gold, not on silver. Mm -hmm. And some people say no. There is uh, we still uh, base our hisab on silver, but uh, calculating the uh, silver nisab, the matter of uh, the, the the way of calculation will be some different, you know. Okay, so it's uh, again a matter of yes. uh, the local local uh, factors. And uh, uh, my last question is uh, refers to your um, purpose of the visit actually to Moscow, the project uh, Agrofin Most or Agro Financial Bridge, which is. Uh, uh, involves uh, uh, increase of exports of agricultural goods in Russia, and uh, with the uh, with the use of Islamic financial instruments such as sukuk. Uh, and there are two actual questions. First is why Islamic investment do not come to Russia until now. Just briefly, maybe your opinion, if you if you have any. And the second one, uh, what do you think about the trends in the sukuk market? I heard that. Um, there is lack of uh, uh, supply of the sukuk, and that's why there is over, over sub subscription to many issues of the sukuk. And uh, do you think that uh, Russia should issue sukuk on a foreign exchange? Uh, and w where should it be? Dubai, Bahrain, or any other? Yes, of course, you know, uh, as I explained earlier, you know, it is a very good uh, project that you have, uh, you are thinking to start. And it will be beneficial for both, for Russia and for other Muslim countries. So, but uh, the, uh, the idea is very good. But uh, uh, in order to practice it, we have to uh, study the, uh, the, uh, the involved issues very deeply. And if we are able to uh, to uh, carry out a structure which is uh, Sharia compliant at the one hand and also beneficial for both parties, mm -hmm. so I think it will be very useful. And uh, the sukuk, if the sukuk are issued on that uh, on that basis, they have a good market, inshallah. And which. Uh, uh, on which stock exchange? So it should be Sukuk in USD or in some other euro in some other international currency. But where? What is the country where to come with this issue to 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 to, to sell the? Bonds? I think UAE will be will be UAE will be the UAE is in one percent in, in the best position to certificate. I think a lot of people have a question. How did you come to this sphere? and the sphere of Islamic finance. Sphere of Islamic finance are uh, both sides. You know, so there is a fear from those who do not uh, really understand what Islamic finance is. 
So they say that when we uh, speak about Islam and Islam, it means that uh, we are Islamize the whole mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. So this is not true. No, even, uh, so this is from one side. The other side is that, uh, that when people outside Russia, they, they are a bit apprehensive what will happen to their capital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this uh, kind of fear should be removed by, firstly by, uh, by screening the sense of climate violence and to uh, the outer world that it is the best place for Muslims. And uh, how did you personally got involved into this sphere? I mean, uh, from your maybe from your youth, uh, young years, when you were a student, or how did you get interested? Or is this, this is a kind of fa family tradition to study the sphere? Because we know that your son also is a uh, well-known scholar in the field of Islamic climate. How did you got involved? Get involved in this? I was I got involved because uh, when I uh, read the Holy Quran. And the, the Bible of Quran even says that uh, whoever is involved in interest is waging war against the Lord. This was very alarming the statement by the Holy Quran. So I uh, tried uh, that to me, and I saw that all the world is drowned in riba, in, in uh, usury or interest. So I, you know, my conscience uh, led me to the effort that this kind of war with Allah should be, should be uh, removed. And I wish that uh, your work, your thesis, your books uh, really bring the, a, new, a new picture of the world, of the globe, of the economy that we see now, that, that it will be moving for the better. And uh, um, coming back to the project of uh, Agrofin Most, um, you have uh, been invited to enter the council, the board of the project. And uh, which kind of advice can you give, like step by step? Or what are the main uh, important points uh, the project team should focus on to succeed? I think, uh, first of all, they, uh, you know, to, to, they make an effort to reach a, be a better structure. Sheikh, thank you very much, Jazakallah Khair, and for your time, for your profound answers, for your visit, and we hope that this is your first visit uh, in a series of visits to Russia, and we'll see you again and again and have opportunities to share let me, technology uh, from you. Let me uh, explain to you, ask that uh, uh, whether the people will be interested uh, in the investment in uh, Russia. You know, there was uh, a, a, a kind of fear so yeah. far, mm. you know. In lack of trust. Yeah, uh -huh. lack, lack of trust. Lack of trust and, and some kind of fear. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are, we are, you are in Russia, uh, present open policy. That will remove this fear, inshallah. So okay. as soon, as far as you go on that line, to be open for all the world, for, for the whole world. So I think uh, this obstacle may be, may be removed, inshallah. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you.